How did the anime NYC go? Everything went about normal. And then after Stella crashed into my artist alley table, a car thought it would try its luck with the side of my hotel. Everybody was fine, just a little drunk. This is a great opportunity to tell you about today's sponsor. I flew straight from Anime NYC to Dragon Con in Atlanta, with only three days in between. But despite Stella's rampage, we didn't need to repair a single thing to set up the booth again. Look at it, shining in all its glory. Is it actually worth it traveling from convention, one after another, never knowing the soft touch of your own bed, selling your colorful paper, hoping to make a profit? Other than chaos being a boy's best friend, how did doing seven shows in a row actually go? Well, I'm only halfway through. Th this is this is the halfway point. Is my sanity still intact? The beginning of this year, I kind of panicked a little bit. I didn't get into a lot of shows I typically get into. My schedule was very sparse when it comes to conventions, which is my main source of income. So I kind of panic applied to everything for the second half. I wouldn't typically recommend this to most people. However, for me, I'm really trying to stockpile as much funds as I can. One, because I'm trying to save for a house, which seems impossible in this day and age. And I really want to focus next year on creating some new art. I have a lot of secret projects in the work that are not getting the attention that they deserve. So that's kind of how I got myself into this situation. Fair warning, this video is about very niche business related artist alley topics. I already made a video about it, but Gen Con last month went really well. That was kind of the starting point for this journey. So we'll start with Anime NYC, which is typically a convention I normally try to avoid. In the past, it has been one of my lowest performing conventions. And you might ask, why did I decide to go to a show that typically does so poorly for myself? The main reason is because it was kind of a pit stop on the way to Dragon Con. So I flew from LA to New York for Anime NYC, did the show there, and then flew directly from New York to Atlanta with about three days in the middle between shows. I had no idea how much stuff I was going to sell at Anime NYC as it had been such an unreliable show. There was also rumors going around that the show was going to perform a lot better than it had years past, at least on paper. They had moved the dates of the show to the summertime before New York Comic Con, which was a show that heavily competed with Anime NYC, and they raised the attendance cap, which was hilariously low for how big the hall was. So I brought five bags with me, and then I shipped two extra boxes of stock straight to New York, and then I shipped three extra boxes of stock to Atlanta in the hopes that I would sell most of my inventory in New York. Now I will say, I had my best Anime NYC ever. I've done the show three times, and every time it's been my lowest performing show of the year. And this year was no exception. I did about seven grand in sales, which is a couple thousand dollars below my average. But it's much better than the previous time I did Anime NYC, where I only made four grand and it cost me about three grand to be there with hotel and travel and everything in mind. This year, I wanted to make sure that my trip was as cheap as possible. So not only is it a pit stop on the way to Dragon Con, but I also slept on a friend's couch. I did not want to spend two grand on a hotel in the middle of Manhattan again, because they love raising those hotel prices during the convention. There's almost 800 artist tables and the events and all the attractions are just incredible. So if you're looking for a show to attend, I highly recommend it. If you're looking to sell, then I would be a little bit more cautious. Not the only one. For a couple reasons. Again, almost 800 artist tables. That's a lot, even for a big show. To put that in perspective, Anime Expo, the largest anime show in the world, has a very similar size artist alley. But the attendance is about three times the size as Anime NYC. So that's a third of the potential money just in the room. And New Yorkers are a little cheaper than LA, at least from my experience. It literally takes more than a day just to walk the entire artist alley. So depending on where you get placed, 
can have a huge impact on sales, which is always a little risky if you're going to a convention where this is a factor. If you're in the first half of the artist alley, I've noticed that those people do significantly better than the people in the back half. I've noticed people get tired and give up before they've even gotten to the second half of the artist alley or just simply run out of money. I wasn't quite in the back, but I was more in the middle on a corner that was actually quite a nice space. And even I heard from a lot of people that they wish they had found my art sooner in the weekend to have made a purchase. But at this point, they were running low on funds. And this is why I think information on this show specifically is so inconsistent. I've talked to people where it's their best show ever, but I've also talked to a lot of people who didn't even make their table back. It's one of the few large shows where I hear quite regularly that established artists didn't break even. And it seems super random. If you fit in that like anime niche perfectly, like yeah, you're probably gonna do really well. But if you're me who's like a little anime adjacent, more independent, it might be cool that you potentially will stand out in some regards, but it's also not what people are looking for necessarily. It's much more economic for me to pick another show over this one. As somebody who's there to make money, you know, and have fun but mostly to make money. I know the things that I'm discussing today are typically beyond most people's control when you're just randomly placed in a space within a convention hall, but I wanted to give some context on why I avoid certain shows, even prestigious ones. At the end of the day, I sell my work at conventions to make a living, as much as I enjoy attending them, but this is the way I get to go back home and draw my little pictures and avoid a real job. So just always be prepared for the worst case scenario. But anywho, I had to pack everything up and as much as I would have loved to go home after the show to rest a bit, it doesn't really make sense to fly back to LA to sleep for eight hours and then get back on a plane to Atlanta. So I flew straight to Atlanta a couple days early, just chilled in the hotel room and was planning to replace a lot of my setup in this time. But oddly enough, just a little tape fixed almost all the damage. Wow, oh my God. How would you describe your branding? Obnoxious. Well worth it, I would say. Anyway, I check into Dragon Con and I am horrified to see that they have placed my table behind the largest pole I have ever seen. We had to scramble a little bit to try to figure things out. We asked if we could push the whole row forward a bit more, which they happily agreed, which was really nice of them, which helped out a ton. Because before this, our table was literally behind the pole. And then normally I have my overhang behind me, but because of this placement, we decided to put it over the table itself just to give us a little bit more presence as we weren't the most visible in our area. And I think this helped out a ton. I've noticed that the specific area we were in this year doesn't typically get a lot of traffic that immediately goes that way from the entrance. But I think because of this elevated presence, we pulled a lot more people who would oftentimes walk the other direction towards us. I know placement can be like this weird, mysterious thing on like how sales patterns work, but it can be a huge factor. If you've ever noticed like in an artist alley, if there's a couple tables that are empty, even if the tables that aren't empty are like real bangers, those tables oftentimes will get less traffic just because people will look down there and it'll feel sparse. Like being placed to the most popular artist in the world oftentimes can be a little frustrating if they have this huge line, but I would prefer that over being placed in an aisle that is really weak as far as the quality of work. The row as a whole is gonna pull more traffic than you will as an individual, regardless of how sick nasty you are. If you ever see this in like row artist alleys where people can kind of pick the row they're going down, depending who is on that end cap can have a big factor in how many people actually walk down that row. If the corner looks like doo-doo, oftentimes people aren't going to venture into that row far enough to actually know that your amazing work is in that row. So in some cases, yes, it is other people's fault that you're not making money. Obviously, if you're super amazing awesome, you can compensate for this a bit. However, if the show is extremely crowded and people get more desperate to find breathing room and get pushed into every crevice of the expo hall, this becomes less of a factor. But once things start to slow down, it can have a big impact on sales. This is why floor plans are extremely important. There's certain artist alleys that are set up in such a way where no spot 
is a bad spot, Anime NYC is not one of those shows. And again, I think I had a, a rather good spot this year, but there's just so many amazing artists at this show that even for somebody who has been doing this as long as I have, still struggles to compete, at least at that scale. But do you know where I do thrive? Nerd ass fantasy shows like Dragon Con, old ass D&D men love to hand me money. Can you blame them? Oddly enough, my numbers were extremely similar to last year. So I made like three times the amount I did at Anime NYC, just under 20 grand. And now that'll get you a lot of Baja Blast. I actually did a really extensive video last year on Dragon Con specifically, and the costs associated with being an artist selling their work in a convention like this. So I'll link that video as well. We did very similar numbers. I'm now back home from Dragon Con, about the halfway point of this adventure. I have about two weeks to restock everything. I am completely out of like every print, every playmat, everything I sell at the moment. So I'm doing a little bit of a scramble after those three big shows. And then I have a card signing event in Phoenix. Then I have to fly back to Atlanta for DreamHack, a show that I've never done before, so I'm quite excited for that. And then I have to fly to Denver for the Drawtober Gallery show. And then immediately after that, I have to come back home for Lightbox, which I'm super excited for. But oh my God, I am gonna be exhausted. And then I'll also be at DesignerCon helping out at Sang's booth. And then for my very last show of the year, I will be at Anime, Expo Chibi. Luckily, my two last shows are local. <sighs> Now let's talk about the car that actually did hit my hotel building in Atlanta. I was staying on the fourth floor. It was like 11 o'clock or something. And then all of a sudden, me and the other people who were staying in the room with me just hear like this loud scraping sound. And then we didn't think much of it. We just kind of went about our day. And maybe like 10 minutes later, my uh, friend Sean Price, who is also staying at the same hotel, messages me and it was like, hey, have you seen the flipped car in front of our hotel? And I was like, what? So we walked down and a car in fact did flip and hit the side of our building. Um, luckily everybody was fine, just very drunk. So now they are content and forever adding to my chaotic lifestyle. So maybe don't drink and drive. You never know when a building is just gonna pop out of nowhere. Stop, stop. Can you take that Feel free to let Stella know in the comments if you have anything you need disposed of.